Now let's get back to our discussion of if statements. I mentioned to you that inside here is going to be a Boolean expression. A Boolean expression is an expression that evaluates to something. What are the possible results of a Boolean expression? Mr. Sawyer? True or false. Those are the only things that can come from a Boolean expression. If I ask, if I ask the question, is X greater than three, is that a Boolean expression, Miss Sophie? What if X is equal to three? Is this expression going to be true or false that I've highlighted? It will be false. So right now, if I was to run this program, for example, you can see that the word small is going to print. Let's try that out. And you can see that the word small is printing here because in this case, the Boolean expression did not come out to be true. Let's look at a simpler Boolean expression, a really, really simple one. Is this Boolean expression true or false? Mr. Matlub, look up here, sir. What do you think? This Boolean expression I've got in here, well, can't get much simpler than that. Is it true or false, Jeremy, the part I've highlighted? So do you think this line will print or do you think this line will print? Uh, right, the, the word big will print. You can see the word big has printed here. Let's try a different one. What's going to print now? Mr. Pandali, sir, the part that I've highlighted here, this Boolean expression, is it true or false, sir? So do you think this line will print, sir, or do you think this line will print? Sir? If the if the clause or the or the expression inside this if statement is true, this part will print, and if it's false, the else will print. What do you think? It's going to print small. So let's run that like that. Now, if I was to go like this, and now I'm saying if it's if not false, this part that I have highlighted here. Is that true or false? Because if it's true, this part's going to print. And if it's false, this part's going to print. Mr. Borden, sir, the part of the Boolean expression that I have highlighted, is that true or false? It's true because it says not false. And not false evaluates to true. So what parts? what's going to print here, sir? Big is going to print. Let's look at that for a second. And you can see big is printing this time. Let's try a different one. Now I'm using the AND operator and I'm asking the question, is this Boolean expression that I have highlighted, is it true or false? Miss Caitlin, the part I've highlighted, is it true or false? It's false because the only way to get an AND to be true is if the left and the right are both true. And that's not the case here, so this thing that I've highlighted, this Boolean expression, which I've highlighted here is false. So the word small is going to print. And you can see that the word small is printing. How about this expression here? Now I will highlight the Boolean expression again. And what I want to know is this Boolean expression that I have highlighted, is it true or false, Mr. Mason? It's true. This time the word big is going to print. Now you can see it's going to start to get confusing and complicated. And so I have a little game that I have built a couple of summers ago to help you get used to Boolean expressions. We're going to play that game for a few minutes right now. Let me show you where it is. So I would like you to open up a new tab on your Chrome browser and go over to this um, this site called uh, westhillcs.com. And then when you get there, click on this APCSA page right here, and that will take you to all the tools for the course. And what I'd like you to do right now is click on this CSA games. That will take you over to this games right here. 
Let me blow this up a little bit so you can see it. And we're going to play the Boolean game now. So click on Boolean. And now it's asking the question, this box that you see here, is it yellow and the number three? That's the question. Is it yellow and the number three? Miss Salutkar, what do you think? It's true. So you will click true here and you can see you got a point. The next question is asking, is this box green and the number two? Mr. Manez, look up here, sir. This box here, is it green and the number two? It is not. So you would click false here. Now the next question is, is this box green or the number four? Mr. Deguj, what do you think, sir? It's true. Now this box, it says it, it is not gray and it is the number three. Mr. Sneed, what do you think? I didn't hear what you said, sir. Okay, let's look at this part. Is this part true or false, sir? It's not gray. Okay, and how about this three? Is that true? Okay, so when we end the true and the true, what do we get, sir? True. So you can see that's going to be true. I want you to play this game for a little while until you get bored with it, and then click on this compound right here, and then you'll see that it'll start to get harder like that. Once you get bored with that, you can click on the challenge. And now I got to go over some stuff with you here, like this one right here. Now, the thing that makes this complicated is you can see they're using and, not, or, all together. And we just want to, before we get going, review what I taught you earlier in school. What is the PEMDAS sequence? For the not, the and, and the or. Who can tell me what is the highest precedence of the three operators? Whoever has their hand up over there, who is that? Oh, Mr. Mason. Of the three, sir, which has the highest precedence? The not has the highest precedence. And the next question is, uh, between the and and the or, which one has higher precedence between the and and the or? Yes, Mr. Degouge. The end has higher precedence. So it's going to do this part first, then it's going to do this part, then it will do that part. So keep that in mind while you're trying to figure this out. This, by the way, is not valid Java. This is just to get you used to the logic. It's not valid Java. You couldn't do this in Java, for example. Okay? It's just get you used to Boolean expressions. Now, uh, you should play this for a few minutes. I'm going to show you an adult version of this game that's much harder which this game is based on. Now, if you come over here to this little link down here and click on it, it will take you to a whole bunch of games. And the one I want to call your attention to is this one right here called the Boolean game. This one, Mr. Sarkar did not write. I don't know who wrote this, but this is built for professional programmers to practice. The reason why I built this other game is because, where'd it go? The reason why I built this other game is because th this one is much simpler and it's better for high school students. This one is for when you graduate from college, but you can try it. Look over here, it says one. What do you think it wants you to click here? Miss Ariam, what do you think it wants you to click here? The number one. How many ones are there, Miss? Three, so you'd click here, here, and here. And now it's asking you to click green. Mr. Oris Bayev, how many blocks should I click here, sir? Here, here, and here. And now it's saying orange and one. You notice that they're only using a single ampersand here because this is not Java. This is some other programming language. It doesn't really matter. Very similar. How many blocks do you see here that are orange and one? Uh, Ms. Mithika, how many? Oh, one. So you just click on that one, and now it says orange or one. Mr. Degouge, how many blocks do you see here, sir, that are orange or one? One, two, three, four, five. And you can see it gets complicated fairly quickly. After you get past the first level, the timer will start, and you won't be able to turn it off, and then it creates all kinds of stress in your otherwise lovely and sedentary life. So you can go through here and practice. 
if this is too hard for you, it gets very hard very quickly. This one might be a little bit more at your level, at least initially until you get good. Please play for a few minutes and I'll meet you back here and we'll discuss our joint experience with the Boolean games. Before lunch, we had started looking at this cigar party problem, which is the first problem on Coding Bat on Logic One. The logic problems are the ones that discuss Boolean logic. And here they tell us that we're trying to return a true or a false from this cigar party method. The cigar party method has two parameters. First, it tells you how many cigars are involved in the party and also tells you if we're currently working on a weekend or not. And so what we're going to do here, we could try to we could try to write a single line of code that basically comes up with the answer. That's kind of hard to do sometimes. So we're going to try an easier approach especially as we're just sort of beginning in our code quest here. And so we're going to create an answer variable and for this particular problem, it probably doesn't matter that much how much, whether we set it to true or false initially. For some problems, it will matter what we set it to initially. Uh, I will go ahead and set it to false. And uh, if we need to change the initialization, we'll do that later. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to figure out under what conditions the cigar party is going to be a success or not. So I think we're going to need some of these operators greater than, less than. Let me put a comment in here. So greater than, we may need less than, we may need greater than or equal to, we need less than or equal to. We're probably also going to need uh, an if statement or two. And what we want to do is basically use some combination of these things to set up our answer variable. Uh, and so, uh, and then when we're all done, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to return the answer variable here like that. So I initialize the answer variable, I manipulate the answer variable, I return the answer variable. That's the algorithm for all of these coding bad exercises. And so what I'd like you to do now is chat with your partner about the conditions under which we want to set the answer variable to be true or false. Uh, let me, let me uh, change my mind and set this to true initially. And might be a little bit easier to figure out when is it a bad party? When's it a bad party? Can someone name a condition under which it would be a bad party? Mr. Degos, what was the simplest condition under which it's a bad party, sir? So I think that's the case. So um, if we have less fewer than 40 cigars, uh, how would I say fewer than 40 cigars here? Uh, let's see, uh, Miss Davis. Look over here. Uh, Mr. Degouge is saying if we have fewer than 40 cigars, it's a bad party. Uh, how am I going to say fewer than 40 cigars here? Uh, cigars. cigars. Now, if you're tempted to put int cigars here, you should know that you've already told the, the program that cigars is an integer, and the compiler really hates being told stuff more than once. So we're not going to put the int there. We're just going to put the word cigars there. And uh, if that is the case, what action do we want to take here, Mr. Uh, Manet, sir? What do we want to do if the cigars are less than 40? Uh, we could return false right away. I'm just going to set the answer to be false here. And now my next question, based on something we learned earlier, do we really need these curly brackets here? I think the answer is no, because there's only one line associated with this if. So I think that that's going to be one situation where we have a uh, where we have a bad party. Now, can someone tell me the other situation we have a bad party is a little bit more complicated? Can someone suggest, Miss Tamara, uh, what's the other situation where we have a bad party? Yeah, just well, no, this is more complicated question. Uh, what could cause a bad party? If we have too few cigars, it could cause a bad party. What's the other way we could have a bad party? Too many cigars. So how would we say that? Okay. 
And then we could say the answer would be false there also. But there's a problem with that, isn't there? Okay, so what, what do we want to say? If the cigars are greater than 60 and, and what, Mace? We could try to write it like that, right? Okay, this is actually a bad way to write it. I'm going to show you a better way, but it will work. Let's just try this out. And you can see that this is the right answer to the problem. I want to talk about this for a little while. I also want to talk about similar things, like sometimes you'll be writing stuff like this. Um, things like that. And when, when, when a job interviewer or a, a person who's experienced at programming is reading your code, and they see code that looks like this, or they look they see code that looks like this, they immediately know that you are just at the beginning of your programming journey. And the reason why is that experienced programmer would never write a line of code like this. So like if, if you had a if you had an expression here like this, they would never write it like this. What would be the shorter way of writing is weekend equals equals true? Mr. Borden, right. See if you can understand why this part is not in adding any value. You see, this is a Boolean variable to begin with. It's already true or false. So if you're asking whether it's true or not, you can just put it in the if statement. You don't need to write is equals equals true. So that's one thing. And this one also has an easier way to write it. Now, I can't write it like that because that's the opposite meaning of what I want. What should I do here, Ms. Ritika? So I should write it like that. Now, you should know that if you write it like this on the AP exam or on any of my quizzes, you'll get a stern look from the TAs, but they will let it go. Likewise, if you write that on the AP exam, they will also let it go, but it's embarrassing. So don't write it like that. Write it like this. And you can see it still works. So we've gone through and done the cigar party. Now what I would like you to do is do this next one here. It says, you and your date are trying to get a table at a restaurant. The parameter you is the stylishness of your clothes. Oh, this is not going to work well for me. I'll tell you right now. Anyway, uh, range 0 to 10. Date is the stylishness of your date's clothes. And then there's some formulas here, et cetera. I would like you to go ahead and attempt this either solo or with a partner, and I'll meet you back here in a few minutes. And then what do we do at the very end here, sir? All right. First, let's see if Mr. Garofalo has done a good job here or not. And the answer is yes. Now, I have some questions I'd like to ask you about this problem. You see these two if statements? This one and this one. Do you think it will be okay for me to swap them positionally? What if I were to take this if statement right here and put it over here? Now, if I was to hit the go button, would it still work? It would not. And now I need you to understand why. So I would like you to discuss with your partner, how come it didn't work when I swapped the if statements? They look fairly independent, or are they? Read the problem through carefully and try to understand why you couldn't swap the if statements. To help you understand why you couldn't swap the if statements, ask yourself the question, if one of you is extremely stylish and the other one is extremely drabby, are you going to get the seat or not get the seat? Mr. Pandali, if you are looking extremely stylish, but your date is looking extremely drabby, let's say you're a nine and your date is a one, are you going to return a zero, a one, or a two, sir? Yes, sir. So you can see that the, it says with the exception that if either of you has a style of less than two, you're going to get a zero. So this this is going to be more important than if either of you are stylish. And as such, it needs to be evaluated later to override the other issue. And that is why this sequence is not going to work. You need to use this sequence 
right here. I need you to understand that. That's going to be important. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to try to use a slightly different combination of if statements here. And I'm going to add in this and ask if this is going to be OK. What do you think about that? Let's hit the if button here. This one doesn't work. I want you to rework this to see if you can get it to work with an if else if structure. Please rework the problem now to use an if else if structure. And now we're just going to take a moment to understand why it works like this. Here, this is the more important clause. And I'm saying if this is true, then I'm never going to even run this one. And that makes sense. You can see that these if statements are not trivial. They involve practice. You get much better at them with practice. And guess what? You got plenty of practice to look forward to because you're going to have to do half of these problems before our next test. I wouldn't worry too much about this today because you really need to focus on the unit two exam coming up on Thursday. But I just want you to see what your, your near-term future looks like. So that's... Uh, we're going to leave this for now, and we're going to go back to our textbook. I want to teach you a little bit more about the beginnings of Unit 3, and then I will give you some time to work on whatever it is you want to work on today. So let's come back to the textbook here, and we're going to go back and discuss Boolean expressions, and we're going to talk about this testing equality and a little bit about the modulo operator. So to do that, let's go back to the demo class we had written in uh, inside of BlueJ. And let's say that we want to write an if statement. And we want to test to see what values are in these variables in y equals 4. And let's say I want to check to see if x and y have the same value. Is this going to be an okay way for me? And what I want to know is, is this going to compile or not compile? What do you think here? Mr. Degouge, what do you think? Yes or no? No. He says no. Why doesn't he think it's going to compile? Miss Erda, what do you think about this? It's not just for strings, it's for objects in general. Strings are objects, so that's true. X is not an object. What is X? Yes, sir. X is a primitive, and you can't call methods on primitives. So if you need to compare two primitives, what should you do? Miss Mythica? You should use the double equals like this. And now you can see, now when I run this, is it going to say same or different? Mr. Jeremy, what's it going to say, sir? Different because one has a three in it and one has a four in it. So you can see it's going to say different. How would I ask if they're not the same? Here I'm asking if they're the same. What would I put here to ask if they're not the same? Miss uh, Ariam, how would I say not the same? Like that? That's not an operator. Well, it is an operator in Java, but that's a division operator in Java. Mr. Pandali? So in computer science, we call this the bang operator because exclamation point takes too long to say. So we would say bang equals here. And this basically means not equals, not equals. Okay, here it would, now it would say same because this is the opposite. So we've learned now how to say equals comparing two primitives. We've also learned how to say not equals comparing two primitives. Let's go back to our textbook. And I want to talk a little bit now about this modulo operator. And to show you what that's all about, I'm going to leave this up for you to fill in. And I'm going to say even and odd. 
And what I want you to do is write something in here that will allow me to figure out is X an even number or not. I'm going to give you some hints. In order to figure out if a number is even or odd, you should use this modulo operator, which we learned about earlier. This operator tells you what the remainder is when you divide one number by another. And so I would like you to work with your partner and figure out what is the Boolean expression that should go on here that will tell you if a number is even or odd. Please work on that now for a few minutes. That's how you ask, is it even? Let's try out some examples. This one should come out to be odd. This one should come out to be even. This expression is going to be all over your AP exam. It might show up in the multiple choice, might show up on the FRQs. They like to ask this question, the College Board does, because it acts, it tests three different ideas at the same time. It tests, do you understand modulo? Do you understand double equals? Do you understand Boolean expressions? Do you understand if statements? That's a popular question on the test. 